Now, you've written about these crazed climate change vandals attacking great works of art and then super gluing themselves to, to the floor or the wall. Uh, the latest such attack saw greenie protesters attack a Monet in Germany, this time not tomato sauce or tomato soup, but mashed potatoes. Have a look. Unbelievable. Douglas, uh, how should we handle these destructive dimwits? I'm, um, I'm going to tread very carefully here, Rita, as I did in my column in The Spectator <laughs> about this, because I don't want to incite violence very much. But I would no. suggest that there should be effectively a bailout fund set up to protect any member of the public who goes in and grabs these people and stops them doing what they're doing. You know, I think that there should be an effort by the general public not to stand by as civilization is trashed by these end time cultists. I don't simply think we should be observers as our cultural inheritance is despoiled and ruined and has paint and soup and mashed potato thrown, thrown against it. I can't think of another era in, in recorded civilized history when people would have just stood by and allowed this to happen. I was in the Uffizi mm. in Florence we can took the opportunity to congratulate the security guards there to do what they've also done in France, which is when people do this kind of vandalism, rip them off the place that they've glued themselves to, throw them away from the thing, prevent them from doing the vandalism they want to do. Don't just stand by as the barbarians try to break through the gates, stop them. So I hope that members of the public will do that. I would trust that the great Australian public will be able to do that. I'd like to see the British and other publics do that as well. Since security guards at so many institutions, let alone the police in so many of our countries, just like to sort of stand by with a walkie-talkie and ask the protesters if they're feeling OK and if they'd like any water, perhaps. Since the police <laughs> won't do their job in stopping this, and since the security guards won't stop uh, um, the people doing this, I would suggest the general public do this. Get stuck in step in there don't allow these people to just destroy our cultural inheritance these people are literal barbarians they think nothing of destroying works of art they're people that we have seen throughout the ages but we never just sat by quietly and allowed them to do it in the past whenever these sorts of people arrived we tried to stop them and i suggest we do the same thing now well, I'm ashamed to say we had a similar event happen here in Melbourne, uh, this sort of uh, far-left greenie activism, and there was no citizens' arrest. People did, as we've seen in Germany and London and elsewhere, they just stood there and watched, and as did security. Now, finally, we don't have much time, but I want to ask you about the revelations that comic James Corden is apparently, well, a bit of a nightmare when it comes to how he treats waiters and others he deems to be beneath him. And The Sun reports that he's not alone. A new book alleges that a very aloof Meghan Markle watched on as an aide demanded a private area for her at a posh restaurant. The now <laughs> Duchess of Sussex handler then name-dropped Prince Harry by saying she needed a table, a private table, because it's for someone who is dating a prince. But the maitre d' apparently was not impressed and did not help out. Douglas, what do you make of this? I'm afraid it's one of the oldest stories that we know in the world of celebrity reach, isn't it? Remember Ellen DeGeneres <laughs> loves to pretend to be this sweet, yes. cutesy little early sort of dancing around, turned out to be horrible to the people she was working with. Turns out to be the same with James Corden. Surprise, surprise, Meghan Markle. It's an absolute rule that you can stick to, that the people who pretend to be absolutely sweetest in public celebrity life are nightmares behind the scene. And by the way, many of the people who are thought to be not particularly pleasant in the public eye are quite often perfectly charming in, in, in private. So I just think this is very typical celebrity behaviour. You pretend to be so sweet and cutesy and charming and actually you're a total nightmare this is one of the oldest celebrity stories and it's <laughs> absolutely uh, i'm not surprised at all that james corden's a nightmare i would expect it